Hey game developers, Bilal from Zenfinity.net and welcome back to the C Sharp Fundamentals for Unity course. In this one we're going to be talking about inheritance. Now, if you haven't seen the rest of these tutorials, make sure to hit the playlist in the top right. There's an icon of the little letter I. Check that out if you want to see all the other videos in this tutorial series. Uh, otherwise, we can go ahead and follow along right now. So in the previous episode, we uh, talked about classes and we actually created a spaceship class, as you can see here, uh, and basically, you know, had attributes and um, methods here. So they could both be called or accessed um, from outside of the class, which we did in our main uh, function over here. And we kind of had this, uh, um, you know, we the system where the Millennium Falcon here <laughs> damaged uh, the Starship Enterprise with our function here. So with inheritance, uh, what we want to be doing is, the purpose of it, I should say, is that we want to take members from a super class and be able to reuse them in a derived class or subclass uh, without having to repeat ourselves by retyping the same function uh, inside of that um, subclass or the same member of any sort, that is. So uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, start with what you can do with inheritance, right? Um, so I'm going to briefly mention some access modifiers, uh, and if you don't know what those are, we will cover those in the next episode. Um, but for now, the uh, access modifiers will do the following, right? So a public member of a superclass uh, can be called from outside anywhere, of course, um, and it also can be called from derived classes. Um, now, inside of a derived class, you can also call the superclasses protected members and public members. Um, and if it's a protected member, you cannot call it from outside of those classes, but you can only call it inside of that uh, subclass. And then in a um, nested derived class, you can call the superclasses private members, but you cannot normally call uh, private members in a superclass within the derived class. Uh, so that might just be a word storm at you right now and not mean anything. Uh, and if that's the case, then just don't worry about it. And we'll uh, visualize it in just a second here. Um, so I think what I'll do is create a superclass called ship, and then we'll make our spaceship class here uh, derive from it. But to make things less complicated, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete everything we have here. Um, and I'll go ahead and delete these two. Okay. Um, and so... I'll go ahead and create a public class ship. Let's actually, you know what, yeah, let's actually call this one the spaceship. And then I'll call this one, um, let's say, let's call this one the battleship, right? So the battleship will obviously be used for like weapon damage, um, but the spaceship will be any spaceship uh, will derive from that, right? So. Um, in our spaceship, let's say we want a hull integrity. We don't know if we have a damage or not, but we definitely have a hull. Um, and like, let's say we have an engine uh, engine speed, right? So public int engine speed, right? Um, and we'll, I don't know, we'll do like 10 meters per second, for example. Um, okay, so then in our uh, battleship class, we want to write our, um, I'm going to delete these really quick, but we want to write our symbol here to uh, show that we're inheriting, right? So battleship inherits from spaceship. And, and now you have inheritance, right? So if you were to make a new battleship, now you would have these two um, integers as members here as well. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean over here. Um, we can now do, uh, let's say, uh, their ship equals new battleship. Oops, battleship. Um, and now we can access the ship's hull integrity, right? We can, uh, oh, and this is, let's just, let's just print it for now, right? Console.write line ship integrity. Um, and, uh, we'll do our engine speed as well, but you get the idea. You know, you see Visual Studio is auto-completing these because obviously I can, uh, access these from the subclass. Um, and so yeah, but basically, the spaceship has these attributes. Battleship, um, because it has this inheritance, is allowing us to see them. So if I were to remove the inheritance, obviously this battleship would no longer have these um, 
definitions of these uh, methods, right? So let's go ahead and undo that. Um, and yeah, so of course, um, another thing to keep in mind though is no, uh, there's no reason that the superclass would get members from the subclass. So if I were to just make a new ship here, like new spaceship, and then say dot, um, you know, weapon, weapon damage, let's uh, say write this line, right? Uh, obviously, there's no reason it has that, and it will again say this does not contain a definition for uh, weapon damage. Okay, so um, those are the basics of inheritance. The superclass has members, the subclass can inherit from it, and it will also have all those members. It's that simple. Um, but you can also do much more fancy stuff with inheritance here. So why don't we go ahead and make a function here for, um, let's say, making engine noise, right? So public void um, make engine noise. And instead of void, uh, well, actually not instead of void, we're going to make this a, a virtual function, right? So this is uh, um, one of the big ones in inheritance. A virtual function inside of its subclass um, inside of the subclass of a superclass, a virtual function can be overwritten um, and then uh, you can put different code in there. So we'll, we'll get into that in just a second here. So I'll say um, for a spaceship, let's just say a console, oops, cannot type console.write line, um, and then we'll say um, the regular spaceship goes like vroom vroom, right? So vroom, vroom, vroom. Perfect. Okay, so um, now now if we uh, call this in either one, since we haven't overridden it in the subclass, it will just print vroom vroom. Now before I get into that, I'll just show you really quick um, if you're interested. Uh, this is what we had uh, before, where we just wrote uh, print the integrity and the engine speed. Just so you know that I'm not lying, and Visual Studio is not lying. Our spaceship class here, or battleship class here, does have these derived members and they're exactly the same as we wrote them in the super class. Okay, so now I'll get rid of all this. And um, our battleship now, um, you can see actually, I'll go ahead and create a regular ship. So I'll call this one battleship. And this one's just gonna be a new ship. Space, space, ship. Um, okay, so now we can say ship dot make engine noise, of course. Um, that'll obviously, you know, do, uh, well, it'll just print this, um, and I'll copy this, and this one will be our battleship, and our battleship, again, we can see there's no compiler error, this is going to work, so I'll hit start, and visualize, and they both do the same thing, because that's just what is, uh, defined here in the superclass. Okay, so I'll close that, and now why don't we go ahead and see the actual interesting part that's, like, not just what you would expect. Um, well, actually, it is what you would expect, but it's a little bit more um, complex, I guess. So let's go ahead and override our make engine noise here, and it'll auto suggest it for me. Um, and by default, it'll put it in this base spot dot make engine noise here. If I hit the tab autocomplete, um, I'll comment that out for now. Um, but basically, what this will do is it accesses the instance of the base class here, which is spaceship, um, and then it will call whatever is in here. So basically whatever is in here is going to be called in based on make engine noise just like you're calling any other function from any object um, just referencing it with this base keyword. Um, so instead of actually just saying room room again let's do I don't know like let's make it say menacing room room right because this one can kill you. So menacing room room and we'll put an exclamation mark to you know for emphasis. Okay so I'll hit start and <laughs> a regular spaceship says vroom vroom, and our battleship has a menacing vroom vroom, so make sure to watch out for that guy. Um, and yeah, so, so that's the basic of overriding uh, a virtual function here. And one reason why this is interesting is because uh, we could add both of these to a list of spaceships, and it would work polymorphically. And what polymorphism is, is it's... Uh, it's recognizing objects of different types as one type, right? Um, because they all derive from the same one type. 
so they can be referenced by it, right? So why don't I go ahead and make a list to visualize this for you? So uh, list space ship. Notice it's the super class. Um, ships equals new list spaceship, right? Okay, so now I'll add to ships um, both ship and battleship. Oops. Uh, something froze. Anyway, battleship uh, and ship. Okay, so now we'll say um, for each, um, these are from, this is from the iteration episode if you didn't check that out. Um, so for each uh, spaceship, ship, or I should say spaceship, spaceship in ships, let's go ahead and do ship, or uh, spaceship dot uh, make engine noise, right? And so what's interesting here is rather than explicitly calling um, battleship dot make engine noise is that now I just have one thing of the type spaceship so we could have a list of all kinds of spaceships like say we have I don't know like a class like that's a TIE fighter or one that's a aerodynamic <laughs> why would you have an aerodynamic spaceship there's no air in space but but you get the idea right so um, all kinds of different spaceships with their own classes uh, they could go into this list and I could just make one uh, function uh, reference here in code and then it would of course do it for every single ship which will be the uh, kind of polymorphic calling of all these subclasses override uh, functions. So you'll you'll see of course the same thing uh, here in the console vroom vroom menacing vroom vroom because we basically did the same thing but in a loop and with a polymorphic reference rather than a direct reference. Okay so that should all um, I feel like that should all make sense by now. Um, and those are the, the basics of inheritance, and that's basically what you would use it for. Um, but to move on, if you want to get a little bit more uh, complicated, um, you want to use a constructor occasionally, of course, if you want to make a new spaceship. So in the last episode, we talked about constructors, and you write them just like this. Um, and I'll put in some parameters here. So. Why don't we go ahead and do hull integrity and engine speed, right? So we'll do int hull integrity and int uh, engine speed. There was no point in me pasting that. Engine speed. Okay, so in there, uh, why don't we just do this dot uh, hull integrity equals hull integrity, right? And uh, we'll do the same with engine speed here. Okay. Um, so public int, and I'm gonna make these private. Oops, <laughs> private and private. And the reason for that is because I wanna give a purpose to actually using this uh, constructor rather than just um, making these public here and allowing them to be accessed from outside. Um, so why don't we go ahead and uh, yeah, actually override, or I guess um, call this constructor from the subclass too, right? So. Um, we, we, sh we saw before constructors you just type new uh, spaceship and then you know put in two integers for the uh, arguments and that'll create a new spaceship so uh, we know that the, how that works so we're gonna do another uh, constructor in the subclass here that's written like this but the difference here is that we're going to inherit from the base constructor right so let's go ahead and write our int hull integrity again here and engine speed. And in here, uh, we just type hull integrity and engine speed. And is that correct? Yeah, okay, so, so what this will do is um, it will call the base constructor before uh, actually calling this one. So um, that means that we're going to apply all these changes here uh, and then we'll do something different here. So why don't we go ahead and say we do a print in both of these, right? So in our console uh, right line, I'll say um, this is the uh, spaceship constructor. And then over here, um, we'll just print this is the battleship constructor. And the reason why uh, I don't need to put anything else in here is because since we're calling this base one with these uh, uh, parameters here, uh, these two things will actually uh, be overwritten. But if we want to add uh, something to our weapon damage here, so we'll do private int 
weapon damage. We can add a third parameter, of course, for weapon damage. Um, and then here we'll just say this dot weapon damage equals weapon damage. Okay. Um, if anything, if any of these things look weird in the constructor like this or weapon damage, make sure to check out the previous episode again. Just we'll say that one more time. Um, okay, so now our weapon damage will be set and our uh, right line will be printed here. Okay, so I'm going to instead of doing any of this actually, I'm just going to call these constructors with um, let's say our hull integrity ten and five. And the spaceship will also, or the battleship will use the same values, but then it'll have an additional 20 for weapon damage. And now we should see uh, these printing, right? So ship should print this once, and uh, battleship should print it. Well, it should print this once, and then print this once, right? So let's go ahead and hit start. And that's what, exactly what we see. So this is the spaceship constructor. It is called from our first uh, constructor call, and then these two are called from our second constructor call because what we do here is we go to our new battleship class. I'm going to stop this really quick. So we go uh, over here, so uh, we see uh, this constructor runs, and it'll see first before actually doing any of this, it'll find this constructor and run what's ever in there, and then it'll run what's over here. So that's actually everything that I want to show you for um, uh, inheritance and polymorphism. So. Um, and if it made sense, then make sure to hit a like, uh, especially if it helped you out, and hit subscribe for the rest of these videos. And again, check out the playlist if you want to see the rest of these uh, fundamental videos. Okay, uh, and with all that said, I will see you in the next episode. Have a good day.